Good morning, my real news media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for March 29, 2024, in the comp probing four police fatal shootings in three days. Investigative teams from the Independent Commission of Investigations are probing the circumstances which resulted in the fatal shooting of four persons by the police in separate incidents from March 26 to 28. The incidents which claimed the lives of a woman and the three men occurred in Kingston, St. Thomas, Manchester and St. Catherine. The latest incidents increased the number of fatal shootings by the security forces for the month of March to 12 and 34 year to date. The latest incident occurred on Thursday morning in Guys Hill, St. Catherine, where an unidentified man who allegedly engaged the police in a shootout was fatally shot and a stolen motor car reportedly recovered. Indicom says that the details surrounding that shooting have not yet been collected. In the second incident, 34-year-old Teresha Maraj was shot while she was a passenger in a vehicle on Lexington Avenue in Kingston on March 26. The shooting of Ms. Maraj reportedly took place during a confrontation between an off-duty lawman and an alleged robber. Len Ford Barrett of Hartis in Yalas St. Thomas was shot on Wednesday during an operation at a house along Basant Lane when he allegedly threatened the lawman with a knife. In another incident Wednesday, 24-year-old Kemar Clark was killed on the compound of Winston Jones High School in Manchester after the police say he drove his car towards the lawman who fired a shot towards the vehicle. Mr. Clark was hit and later pronounced dead at hospital. Indicom is appealing to any person who witnessed any of the four fatal shooting incidents to contact the Office of the Commission at 876-968-1932. St. Anne Man Charged with a Brother's Murder A man who used a metal pipe to hit his brother on the head, killing him in Cascade St. Anne last Friday, has been charged. Beswick Allen, 44, has been charged with the murder of 48-year-old Lindbert Allen, a farmer of Cascade. It is reported that the older brother was at his home sometime after 1.30 p.m. when an argument developed with his sibling over money. A fight ensued and the older brother was hit on the head with the pipe. He fell to the ground and was later pronounced dead. The police were called and the younger brother was arrested. Mr. Allen was charged on Thursday. Alleged a car thief killed in police shootout an unidentified man was shot and killed in a reported police shootout on Thursday morning after allegedly stealing a car in Guys Hill, St. Catherine. The news understands that about 5 a.m., the police were informed that several men were spotted in a stolen car in the Moorland community of Guys Hill. It is reported that while responding, comms were fired upon by a group of gunmen. It is further reported that the police took evasive action and the fire was returned. A group of the hoodlums escaped in another vehicle while the unidentified man was found suffering from gunshot wounds. He later succumbed to injuries received. A motor car which was reportedly stolen was also recovered. Police urge a vigilance following fatal stabbing of vendor in Negril Transport Center. Following the gruesome murder of 51-year-old vendor Sandra Heasley at the Negril Transportation Center, the West Maryland police are appealing to business owners to be more vigilant when operating in this space. Police have confirmed that Hazley, who is said to have sold the fruits and the clothing in the bus park, was robbed and stabbed in the neck on Thursday morning. She later succumbed to her injuries. We wanted to implore business operators to be vigilant in operating in the area, DSP Sean J. Mitchell cautioned. He also advised the residents and the business owners alike to report strange incidents in the tourist hotspot. All right, so shortly after 6 a.m. this morning, the police received a report of an incident at the Negril Transportation Center. On arrival, the police observed a female suffering from stab wounds. The police immediately summoned the Negril paramedics who responded and assisted. However, the help of the however, the paramedics were unable to save the life of this person. The investigations have so far revealed that the person who has been identified as Sandra Hazley, who is 51 years old of Burn Savannah in Westmoreland, was fatally stabbed. She was reportedly robbed during an attack at the back of the transportation center 
and her bag stolen. The police have so far been able to uh, process the scene and look at several different angles. We're following several leads at this time and we believe that with the help of citizens we'll be able to crack this case. We're advising citizens or anybody who may have information about this incident to contact the police at 311 or the nearest police station. St. Mary woman accused of selling crack cocaine. The narcotics police have charged a St. Mary woman after her home was raided and the crack cocaine was allegedly discovered. She is 52-year-old Sophie Ricketts, a resident of Anata Bay in the parish. Investigators said that the woman was arrested on Monday during a raid on her home at a dump land in Anata Bay. She has been accused of selling crack cocaine in the streets of Anata Bay and the surrounding areas to persons classified as a drug addicts. The police said they seized 146 pieces of crack cocaine weighing 12.5 grams with an estimated street value of $36,000. Ricketts, who is charged with a possession of cocaine and a dealing in cocaine, was later released on station bail and is booked to appear in the St. Mary Parish Court on May 21. Traffic Court Judge orders Family Court Judge to promptly attend the court. A Family Court Judge, while presiding over a large number of cases on Wednesday, had to adjourn court speedily after a Traffic Court Judge ordered the judge to appear in court immediately. The incident has sparked a discussion among some members of the judiciary and the legal profession. According to reports, the Family Court Judge, who was issued a traffic ticket, had engaged the services of an attorney at law in the matter. The attorney informed the court on Wednesday that he was seeking an adjournment in the matter. The adjournment, it was reported, was for a warrant to be issued and stayed to another date to facilitate a guilty plea. The judge then directed the attorney to tell his client to appear in court. The attorney then informed his client that the judge had refused to stay the warrant, so the judge had to adjourn court immediately. The judge, who was issued with a traffic ticket for making a wrong turn on a particular road, pleaded guilty and was admonished and discharged. Members of the public who had cases in the family court had to wait until the judge returned. One of the questions being raised in legal circles is whether the Traffic Court Act makes a provision for an attorney to represent a person who has a challenge in making an appearance in court. Senior Attorney at Law Leonard Green, who is president of the Advocates Association, said Wednesday in response to the incident that ticketable offenses under the Road Traffic Act do not criminalize an offender. He said it has been the practice over the years in the traffic court where the judge will accept a plea where the representative of a person is entering a guilty plea and pays the fine on behalf of the offender. He said such a practice helps to dispose of ticketable offenses. Attorney at law Tamika Harris said it was unfortunate that the family court judge had to adjourn court to attend the traffic court. I don't see how the judge's physical appearance in court advances the case in light of the fact that the judge intended to plead guilty and had legal representation in court, she emphasized. Harris highlighted the fact that the children's welfare is always of paramount importance and that the justice system has always viewed the children's matters with urgency and a special care. A judge should never do anything to compromise another judge's ability to deal with the children's matters expeditiously, she added. A retired judge said that all judges have the discretion to adjourn a matter for another date and can also issue a warrant at the stay execution to another date. Motorcyclist rejects a mediation in assault case, says his life was threatened twice. A motorcyclist who accused a man of attempting to hit him off his vehicle before allegedly threatening him with a gun rejected mediation when he appeared in the Kingston at the St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday. The accused 41-year-old D.O.N. Duncan has been charged with assault at the common law, using a firearm to commit a felony, and the unauthorized possession of a firearm. When a presiding judge Carlo Mason asked the complainant if he would consider going through mediation, to have the matter resolved, the man rejected the offer, stating, No, Your Honor, my life get threatened not once but twice. The alleged threat reportedly occurred on Wednesday, July 12, 2023, about 12.55 p.m., when the complainant was traveling on his motorcycle in New Kingston. Reports are that upon reaching the intersection of St. Lucia Avenue and the Sydney Road, a Toyota RAV4 
allegedly being driven by Duncan, almost hit the complainant from his motorcycle. According to reports, this led to an argument during which the driver of the RAV4 allegedly pointed a firearm at the complainant and then drove off. The case was postponed until June 20.